you know, jazz improvisation is very much a language and a simple way to have more to say is to simply know how to get more from what you already know. First off, to illustrate this, we need a bit of musical language to work with. I've come up with this C major based idea. One, two, three, four. And the intervals of it, it's starting on an E, which is the third of our C chord. Going to the fifth, so three, five. Then we've got a half a beat rest, so one and rest on two. So one and two and, coming in on that third note on the and. So it's going three, five, rest for half a beat, three, then root, C. The fifth, but an octave lower than when we just got it, so G. The nine to D, C. So E, G, E, C, G. So this idea would work over a C chord, C6-9, C6, C major 7. Now this idea is okay, but I think we could take it further. I'm going to show you four ways we can do this. Method number one is to take things away from it. So here's four bars on the screen. The first bar is the example as we just played it. So one, two, three, four. And then the second bar, as you can see, we've omitted the first note. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and two, three, four, one. What that does is it avoids starting on beat one, so it's a little bit more rhythmically interesting. If I play the first and the second bar together, one, two, three, four. So by taking away, we're getting more from what we already know. It still feels like that idea, but you know, slightly more interesting maybe. In the third bar there, we've taken out two notes. We've taken out the third note and the final note. So this is going one, two, three, four. And the rhythm of that is going one and rest, three and four, one and two, three and four. If I play the first three bars, one, two, three, four. I like the second one best, I think. And then the final bar, the fourth bar there, as you can see, um, we've taken out the third note and the fourth note. So this is going one, two, three, four. There's more space in that one. It's because it's going one and two and three and four and whole line together, one, two, three, four. So as you can see, just by taking away, we've still got the sort of basis of the idea, the same sort of harmonic feel, um, but it's obviously slightly different and you're getting more from that one idea that we had. Now on to method number two, let's add notes this time. So by adding things to it, we're gonna fill any space and there's only one place where there's space in the idea. And that's the rest on the first half of beat two, the one and two, the rest there. So we're going to put a note in place of that rest, and if you look at the first bar there, uh, we're putting in an F before the third note, so it's going... Three, four... So we're just adding another note from the key, if you like, an approach note to the third. One, and two, and three, and four, and... I think I actually like that better than the original idea. And then the second bar, uh, let's approach the three. E from a semitone beneath, very bluesy thing to do, so put those side by side, three, four, and then if I play the original, then those two variations, one, two, three, four. You can see the idea is still very much there and we're just getting more from it by just tweaking it ever so slightly by adding notes to where there was originally space. Method number three, let's change the octave of some of the notes. Method three is octave displacement and that's where you change the octave either lowering or raising uh, notes to a different octave for variety. So in this first example, we're raising the last three notes up an octave instead of going there for the G. We're getting it there at fret 8 on the B string, so... 
that's exactly the same pitches. Still E, G, E, C, G, D, C. So the same pitches as this. But by changing octave after that C at fret 10, it gives a slightly you know, different feel to our idea. One, two, three, four. Uh, different tonality because of the you know the higher string coming in. So if I play the original idea, then the first one there almost works as a nice little response to the first one. And then in the second bar there, we're keeping the first two notes in the same octave as the original idea. Then straight away we're changing octave for the remainder of the, the idea. So it's. So side by side, original idea, then the two variations with octave uh, displacement. One, two, three, four. Same, again, same thing, but it's just giving it a fresh feel. And you can do that to any idea or even melody. And my final method, number four, that I've saved to last is my favorite, and that's changing the interval so it works over other chord types. So by changing the harmony of it, by changing, say, the third or maybe the seventh or the fifth, you can make it work over other chord types. Now, the original idea worked over a set C major kind of bass chord. So. But we could adapt this line and make it work over, say, C minor 7. We'll look at it over C minor 7 flat 5 and C7 too. So to do that, what we have to do is change the important note. And the important note in an arpeggio is, is chiefly the third. So if we got this first idea starts on E, which is the major third of our C chord. If we lowered that, that note, fret 9 on the G string by a semitone, we get E flat, which gives us the sound of C minor now. And we just change that one note. So all of the E's, we're going to change to C, uh, E flat, and it gives us this. So that's the, that gives it a completely different feel. We really, really like that. And that would work over that, compare it to the major. Minor. And then in the next bar, if you see, what I've done in this one is I've flattened the, the fifth, so it would work over the C minor 7 flat 5. And this, I don't think this one sounds quite so good, but just, just illustrating the point. shows you how it can work though over other chord types just by changing the intervals to fit um, this chord instead of a, a C major bass chord. The final one there, work it for a dominant, so C7. Um, what I've done here, the original idea didn't contain a 7, so I've added in the flat 7, replaced one of the notes and gone... And it sounds bluesy then. You see this note, fret 8 on the, the D string, the B flat. That note makes it work for C7. So major, minor, minor 7 flat 5, and dominant. What that requires of you, it requires you to know your arpeggios and the notes in your chords, but if you've got a major based idea, you just flatten the 3. If you've got a minor based idea, raise the three and it might work over your, your major chords. So it's a great way to get more out of ideas that you know and to mess with them rather than learning lots and lots of ideas because uh, that can be tricky to remember um, and, and find when you're soloing. Hopefully you can see from my approach here today that you can get a lot from a musical idea, a lot more than might first appear. And rather than learning, say, a major based idea, a minor based idea, a dominant idea, a minor 7 flat 5 idea, or even diminished or whatever, you know, just simply messing with what you already have and trying to make it work over other chord types immediately helps you get more from what you already know. I think it's a really smart way to work with the language that you've got. I'm not blessed with a great memory when it comes to remembering vocabulary and, and licks and things like that, so I approach things like this and I, I think of it as a language and try and improvise it with it in that way. If you've got any questions or comments then please do leave them below. Uh, stay tuned for Jessica's lessons every Wednesday and Saturday. Until next time, you take care.